Hello, everyone, and welcome to Literary Tales. I'm your host, Paul Kraus, and in this episode, we complete our short introduction to Plato's Republic, examining the final story that concludes the entire work, the myth of Er. The conclusion of Plato's Republic is the myth of Er. What we are to make of the myth, and why is it important? Why does it come at the very end of the work and not earlier? It is important to remember that, as I've said before concerning the stories contained in Plato's Republic, that Plato is asking us to question the kind of political city or society we live in. After all, so many of the conversations between Socrates and his sophist interlocutors deal with the polis of human society in general. Plato's inclusion of the myth of Ur serves several purposes. First is that it is a story of resurrection, but a resurrection to knowledge, to truth. It is here that we finally arrive at a city of light, the city of knowledge. Second is that the story comes after the descent through the cities presented by the sophists, the savage city, the city on the surface of the world presented by Thrasymachus in book one, the murderous and nihilistic city, a devolution from the savage city of Glaucon and Arimantus presented in book two, and the tyrannical city of the cave, the ignorant totalitarian and underground world of opinion and sophistry. We had an entire episode covering that, the allegory of the cave, and how it's actually a political allegory. The trajectory of Plato's descent ascent narrative is what we enter the underground city, but eventually leave to arrive at the light, the city in which Er now finds himself at the conclusion of the Republic. Third is the command from the guardians for Er to venture back to his land and inform his countrymen of what he has seen, come to know. In being a story about resurrection, the new life that is invoked is the life that comes with truth. Many people will be familiar with this idea in the narrative of resurrection in Christianity. It is not so much that the resurrection of Jesus showed Christ's divinity, it was actually his suffering on the cross that did that, but that the truth and wisdom that Jesus preached has come to fruition in resurrection. In knowing the truth, Ur has attained what the good life, the true life entails. It's the same principle platonic story. When we are resurrected, we are resurrected to truth, to knowledge, to life. The intellectual life is the good life. Knowledge of the truth is what brings about the fulfillment of life itself. This lack of life that is highlighted through the cities presented by the sophists is what we must overcome. Since the story is also one that comes in the aftermath of Plato's descent through the hell of the cities of the sophists, it is contingent that the myth of Ur is the end product of the running question of what kind of city we live in. According to Plato, it remains an open question for us to answer for ourselves. Throughout the Republic, it is important to remember that since the sophists lack true knowledge, their cities lack true virtue and ultimately true life. Thrasymachus' city is dominated by brute force. Glaucon's city of natural injustice and the ring of Gyges leads to murder and theft. The cave, which Socrates describes, is the fulfillment of the debasement of the city that the sophists describe and ultimately promote. It is a city of ignorance, the world of pure opinion, where technology and power, chains and false material images, are utilized to keep the populace enslaved while thinking they are free. 
in the form of thinking they understand by barking at one another about the nature of shadows, the world of the cave, the tyranny of opinions is a world of savage loudness and shouting. The myth of Ur upends the devolutionary descent into the city of tyranny. Ur is found above ground in a world of light, whereas in the devolution of the tyrannical city, we end up in the darkness of the cave. It is, therefore, the exit from the cave and the true arrival at the sun that this story is communicating and signifying. Finally comes the command to Ur to return to his home and tell his countrymen what he has seen, what he has come to know. This is a command of sociality. Throughout the Republic, in the many analogies and metaphors, the philosopher is often detached from the world around him. Recall the philosopher on the ship, as the owner and crewmen argue, the philosopher is far away from the conflict. The philosopher is not living up to humanity's social nature. At the beginning of the Republic, the dialogue starts with a festival. A festival in ancient times was a very intimate and social event. Plato's understanding of man is that he is not an isolated, solitary, and atomistic individual. Rather, man is a social animal, which is what Aristotle later put to paper when he declared man was a political animal in his politics. Socrates, throughout the dialogue, is a living representative of the real philosopher king. He is engaged with his city and its citizens. He discusses all of the important questions of life, politics, and justice. The command for error to return home with his newfound knowledge, e.g. life, is the consummation of man's social nature. Part of man's social nature is to come to know the truth through social interaction. This is the quintessential reality of the Socratic dialectic. It may be the case that an individual in complete solitude can come to know the true forms, but it is more likely that he will do so in the company of others as they discuss the seminal questions relating to the forms. Furthermore, since we are social animals, it is more akin to our nature that we have friends and a degree of sociality with one another. Because the city is the highest expression of the social nature of man, a city that is cut off from itself is a city that cannot stand or function. If people do not live by the standard of truth or know the truth, then the city is liable to become a tyrannical cesspool, the cave. Knowledge is the basis of liberty for Plato. You cannot be free without knowledge of the truth. The free and just city, thus, is the city that knows the forms, the truth, and lives by that standard. Err's mission is nothing short of the hope for all to live in a free and just society, something that is prevented when lacking proper knowledge. This is why it is so important to recognize why the myth of error comes at the conclusion of the work, especially having just been inside the world of the cave. Throughout all the political stories that Plato tells, we begin in the rough, earthly world of dog-eat-dog -dog dominance, given to us by Thrasymachus. We eventually descend into murder, theft, and tyranny, and we find ourselves no longer even on the rough and tumble world of the earth. We find ourselves in the darkness and the tyranny of a cave. The myth of Ur comes at the end of this devolutionary journey into tyranny. We are now in the world of the sun. We learn to know what the truth about human nature and knowledge is. And now it is our task 
having learned this knowledge, to share it with others so that they may join us and help lift society out of the cave and into the light of truth, goodness, liberty, and the proper realities of life, which come with the understanding of truth and living by truth and not by opinion.